Welcome to St. Maximilian Colby Parish. To Jesus Christ be glory and power forever and ever. His are majesty and splendor, and his kingdom is everlasting, a kingdom of cosmic dimensions. Let us stand and pray the Memorare to St. Joseph. Remember, O most chaste spouse of the Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto you, my spiritual father, and beg your protection. O foster father of the Redeemer, despise not my petitions, but in your goodness hear and answer me. Amen. The readings for today are number 953 in the Glory and Praise book, and our entrance hymn is number 368. Oh, 
Welcome to this wonderful feast of our Lord Christ the King. And we welcome our brothers and sisters who are praying with us through live streaming. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, my mother's fault. Therefore, I ask for the spirit of your virgin, all the ages of saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render you majesty service and ceasingly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one as w and was presented before him, like the one like a son of man received dominion, 
glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion. That shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has, been, and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priests for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth, listen to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The feast of uh, this solemnity was placed in the church liturgy in 1925 by Pope Pius XI. A question we would have after 1,900 years they are coming to recognize him as a king and place him in the calendar of the church just about 100 years ago. Something strange here. Something strange. And we know the church grew in the liturgy, but to bring the feast of the Lord to be in the church to be celebrated now, around this time by this pope, there was a, a reason, some type of background uh, all over the world. It was known by the church that Christ is a king. We see this, he say himself uh, from the, the, the gospel that was not written in 1925. And also we see also said that uh, we shall see in the weeks to come when Isaiah says, he will rule of the house of his father David. But this is the particular time when Pope Pius the eleven put this feast in the calendar of the church to be the last celebrated, the last Sunday of the liturgical year. The reason we can only see the background of the world that was then Back during that time of Pope Pius the 11, the powerful forces were claiming loyalty of men and women all over the world. This was the time the peak of a Soviet communism was building up and becoming visible and strong. It is asserted that uh, they themselves claim the lives of men and women belong to the Soviet state by rule and being ruled by a communist party. So the people who are no longer freedom or like here in America, they belonged to the state. So the people were owned by the state as you can own your own property. And this time the labor of the people were not for their own benefit, but for the benefit of the state. Even their lives belong to the total communist state. This was building so strong, yet we know by this time also the, the Pope uh, was, was, a, uh, was the higher authority that was a kind of spiritually and even physically was, was known to command so much power. But then, as you can see, 
challenges are coming up from different places. Dictatorship in part of other parts of the world, totalitarian movements, eh, and that taking hold, even the sides of Europe near to the Vatican or rather Rome, we will say also claim the control and ownership mm, of lives of the people. People were forced to labor for what was not their own gain, but the gain of their powerful masters. This was also the time when Hitler was building his own empire and becoming very strong, growing up, and therefore around this time that people belong to the kings, they belong to the states. Then another time something came up, you see when, of course, Hitler was becoming so strong, he was also in such a control that he wanted to have a super race. You didn't think of the Pope, think of uh, any uh, kind of authority anywhere else, even of God. He wanted to have his own super race. So he will take, as a history say, very huge and strong men and huge and strong women into cam camps like animals to breed huge people who are going to be able to be a huge uh, uh, German race. Excuse me, if you are German, you are not there yourself. The era of exploration also was taking place. And this is the time when colonialism was beginning to take much root. With the European, the real goal of colonization was to grab power and control of the natural resources of the country, the country that they, they, they had conquered and industri industrialization was growing. So natural resources and cheap labor was going to make this, all this nation big and uh, also be under their kings. Now, the question, the religious orders, the people who are surrounding the Holy Father, his, his kind of power that was not politically or religiously was like kind of diminishing. And therefore, the vote and theology of Pius XI, he had to make clear who had sovereignty over the people. He had to bring the knowledge to the people who were colonizing others, to bring the knowledge of these kind of places that were growing big communism, and all that to bring to them their attention. As much as they claim all this power, they have to understand the sovereignty of hearts and souls of men and women is Christ the King. And therefore, this kind of came around. And uh, we know, of course, when uh, this nation, USA, began there with the we hold this truth to be self-evident that all men were created equal, that they are endowed with their creator, not the king of the earth and not communism, with their creator, mm. an alienable right. So the rights can never be sent away, if I understand it that way and that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness and freedom that are God-given. So people were also challenged around, you know, by the American that uh, they are God-given. They are not going to be seen from uh, Hitler or from whoever started the uh, communist. So this is the time when uh, we will say the background of the Pope bringing the mind uh, to the people and also once again uh, a country like this picking such very, very uh, console consoling words to bring to the mind of the rulers of the world and the king. The people, freedom and right are God-given. 
So we see today the reading is uh, Jesus is standing before Pontius Pilate. And one of the questions is, are you king? Jesus answered, you say, I am king. So probably could have told him, congratulations, you know that. There are very few people who, don't, who know that. Yes, I'm king. He says, for this I was born, and for this I came into this world to testify to the truth. And we know the answer also to Pilate, but what is the truth he asked him? And the answer of Jesus, what did he tell Thomas? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So Pilate did not know he was talking to the truth itself or himself. Christ's kingship is one of humility and service. He has shown this in his own life. He said, you know that those who recognize the rulers of the Gentiles, they lord it over them, and their great make them authority over them felt. He tells his disciples, and you and I, we shall not do that. Whoever wishes to become great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will have to be slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. And he who gives his life as ransom for many. Jesus knew the oppressive nature that is going to follow in humanity, but his role as king is a humble king, service. He's not a commander of his own people. He's so humble that he's going to ride on a donkey when other kings are using chariots. Giving us this example, shortly I will use on the altar the preface. This preface is the one that comes before holy, holy, holy. And we are going to hear in this, in this preface. Father, you anointed Jesus Christ, your only Son, with the oil of gladness to be eternal priest and universal king. The opening of this prayer. As priest, he offered his life on the altar of the cross and redeemed the human race by his one perfect sacrifice of peace. As king, he claims dominion over all creation that he may present to you, Father Almighty, an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. Who is your king? Christ is the king. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the glory and glorified, who has spoken through the cross. I believe in one who will go to heaven and have the Son of Church. I confess my baptism for the goodness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father in heaven, we celebrate the solemnity of our King. We come to you broken with our petition. For the church and all called by Christ, that they serve with joy and a sharing spirit. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For leaders in countries large and small, that they respect life from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those near death, that they find healing in the redemptive suffering of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayer. For the oppressed, and those without earthly hope, that they find help and support among the followers of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of our community, that all be ready to see Christ when he comes in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <laughs> for Richard Wisner, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those listed in our book of intentions, for those in our memorial book, for our benefactors and all that is in our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. O Lord grace, the Lord is with thee. Bless our God among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death.
that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the of the Church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gift of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Lord our God, it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are anointed, you are only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that he offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty, an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are claimed. Therefore, most holy, merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless this gift, this holy and unblemished sacrifice, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to God, unite and govern her throughout the whole world 
together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Servator, our Bishop, and all who hold him to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, and all who are gathered here, whose faith and devotions are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it to themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul and Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Clento, Clement, Sisto, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosma and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all these, we may be protected by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with his eyes raised up to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessings and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the, the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who drip through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants. In this month we pray for faithful departed. We think of so many people who have died with the corona as well. Those who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and the rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, those sinners, hope in the abundance of your mercy. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcelino, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merit, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. <coughs> oh, amen with him and in him. O oh, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We the power and glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your child, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our King Jesus be with you all always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Please remember that masks are required if you have not been fully vaccinated, excuse me, with the COVID-19 vaccine. On December 1st and December 8th, Notre Dame Retreat House will be offering single days in silence, reflection, and prayer entitled Desert Days in Advent. 
All are invited to join us. Space is limited to 20 each day, so registration is required. Please register at Notre Dame. There will be a second collection next weekend for the Catholic University and other American higher education institutions. From the Christmas sharing program, at the entrances to the church are stands with yellow flyers. On one side of the flyer is an explanation <clears throat> of the information on the stars on our sharing tree. Hopefully this will answer some of the questions that have arisen, plus a reminder about the food collection. The other side of the flyer lists the various volunteer opportunities available this year. If you are interested in volunteering, please contact Pam. Her contact info is at the bottom of the yellow flyer. Pam looks forward to hearing from all of you. We are announcing we have uh, completed our program for over the month of uh, December, especially Christmas and the masses and the Feast of Our Lady up to the beginning of January. It will be out in the bulletin very soon. So for those involved, we are asking you to look at it and then uh, remember we have also the other side of the, the cluster. So we have to work early to see that uh, things are in place uh, for these services. We invite all our brothers and sisters who are still at home, when you can come, you'll see in live streaming, join us for the services of the end of the year. And uh, once again, choir, I think you are having an extra member today, no? <laughs> Is it uh, one day you come and appeal to these people, give you extra members. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace of Christ. Amen. Wishing every family a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. You too, Father. Amen. Yeah.